This is the International Soccer Preview and we are Soccer Files Canada. Welcome to Series 17. We're looking at the squads of the 2023 Gold Cup. This episode is the short version for Trinidad and Tobago's players. Here we go. It's June and welcome back to the uh, second part of the media cast. Uh, welcome if you're joining us from the uh, first part. So it's a month later for you <laughs> in a blip. And uh, if you're joining us for the short version, um, I will tell you, just summarize what we did in the first part, which was uh, we made a list of basically players that have recently played for Trinidad and Tobago and uh, categorized them according to their position and also according to their likelihood of making the squad, mostly based on uh, their participation over the last couple of years. So uh, now we are going to go through that list again. And uh, we have the preliminary roster. It's a 58 preliminary squad for Trinidad and Tobago. And we have the 23-man final squad. So we'll tell you uh, who made each of those. So we're going to go back to the beginning here. Um, and we begin, uh, well, the manager, Eve, uh, Angus Eve, uh, remains the same. And so we will consider him as having made the squad. And um, next we have uh, Philip Marvin um, as a definite candidate for goalkeeper. So he was our only definite candidate and uh, he did make the final squad. And we had two likely candidates in Nelly, uh, Nicholas Frenderup and in uh, Denzil Smith. And both of those made the squad. So very much as expected there. Um, we had a possible candidate with Adrian Fonset. He did not even make the uh, preliminary squad, Adrian Fonset. And we move on to defenders. And we had one kind of versatile defender in David Aubrey, who we considered a definite candidate. And he did make the final squad. And uh, among the central defenders, we had one definite and then four possible. So we'll begin with the definite candidate, which was Kareem Moses, and he is selected to the squad. Uh, and among the possible candidates, I guess I wouldn't be surprised if one or two of them went, and one of them or two, one or two of them did. So I'll tell you who made the squad. Uh, Sheldon Bato and uh, Leland Archer, both making the final squad. The other two candidates were Justin Garcia, and um, jo jo Josiah Trimmingham, and both of those players only made the preliminary squad. Um, also making the preliminary squad is our possible but unlikely candidate, uh, Anthony Herbert. So he is uh, still around, but not quite there making the squad. And then we had two players who seemed to be off the squad, Radanfa Abu Bakr, uh, and he did not make the preliminary squad. But the other one, uh, Jelani Peters, who we considered off the squad, uh, was actually selected for the preliminary squad, uh, but not the final squad. On to left backs, we had definite candidate Noah Powder. So a bit of a surprise here, as he was only selected for the preliminary squad. And also our likely candidate, Julian Keston, uh, not selected for the uh, preliminary squad even. And so uh, we're down to our possible candidates and only one of them made it. It was uh, Tristan Hodge. Uh, so a bit of uh, a bit of surprise there uh, in the left back position. The other two candidates we had, uh, no, one candidate at the possible level was Jamil Neptune. He made the preliminary squad, and our possible but unlikely candidate Raymond, or so, sorry, Andre Raymond, made the preliminary squad. <clears throat> Mikael Williams seemed to be off the squad, and that proves true as far as this goes. He was not selected even for the preliminary squad. But the other player seemingly off the squad, uh, Ross Russell Jr., at least made the preliminary squad. So still uh, kind of around in that sense. Moving on to right backs, we have a, a definite candidate, Alvin Jones, and he made the squad. Uh, and we had likely candidate Jesse Williams, 
who did not make the squad, only named to the preliminary squad was Jesse Williams. Instead, uh, the possible candidate, Shannon Gomez, uh, was selected for the final squad. And then we had um, Isaiah Garcia, um, uh, seemingly off the squad, and apparently so, as he was not named to the preliminary squad. Uh, we had a couple of uh, general defenders, uh, basically players uh, who have so little uh, play with Trinidad and Tobago that we don't know exactly what position they play. And one of them, uh, Kareem Riley, did make the preliminary squad, uh, but the other one, Jelani Felix, uh, did not. We had him as possible but unlikely whereas we had Kareem Riley as possible. Uh, all right, that does it for the defense, and we move on to midfield and uh, defensive midfielders. So uh, we had noted that Kaleem Highland, uh, the veteran, was off the team, and indeed he is, having last played in July 2021. And um, we are left with our likely candidate, uh, Naveel Hackshaw, who did make the squad. Uh, but our possible candidate, Michelle Poon Angeron, uh, only made the preliminary squad there. Okay, and on to central midfielders. Uh, we had a definite candidate in John Paul Rochford, but to our surprise, he uh, was only named to the preliminary squad. And then uh, our first possible candidate was Paul Leston, who wasn't even named to the preliminary squad. But the next three possible candidates were... And that is Ajani Fortune, Daniel Phillips, and uh, Andre Rampersad, uh, all three of them making the final squad. Uh, we had a player who seemed to be off the squad in Kivon Goddard, uh, but he at least made the preliminary squad there. And we move on to left midfield, where we had a, a possible candidate in Dwayne Muckett, and he made the preliminary squad, but not the final squad. Uh, he was the only player coded as a left midfielder, but we had two uh, coded as a right midfielder, but we deemed them as seemingly off the squad. So that proved true with Hashim Arcia. Uh, he was not selected even for the preliminary squad, but uh, Nicholas Dillon uh, at least made it to the preliminary squad there. Uh, on the left wing, we had a definite candidate in Rion Moore. So in one of the surprises, he did not make the final squad, only the preliminary squad for Rion Moore. And instead, left winger uh, Ryan Teffler, who we uh, did have as a likely candidate, uh, was selected for the spot. Our possible candidate, Marcus Joseph, uh, not even named to the preliminary squad there. Okay, on the right wing, we had a likely candidate in uh, Kale Overy, and he did make the squad. Uh, but our, our uh, possible but unlikely candidate, Jumou uh, Francois, uh, not even selected to the uh, preliminary squad. And then we had one player uh, coded as a general midfielder. We're not sure where he plays in the midfield because he's only been with the team since 2023. And we had him as possible but unlikely. So, uh, But he did make the squad. Justin Sadu, uh, a, surprise, um, a surprise selection there. Uh, okay, among attacking midfielders, we begin with... Uh, Judah Garcia. Now, that's a bit of an interesting case. Uh, we didn't report an injury on him in the May, uh, in the part one in May, uh, because he wasn't injured at that time. He picked up his injury in early June, and it's actually an unknown injury and an unknown return date uh, that he's coded with. However, uh, he, uh, he was selected to the squad, uh, so a bit of an injury concern, perhaps. Uh, but Judah Garcia, uh, one of our three likely candidates, selected for the squad. Uh, Jovin Jones was another likely candidate there. He too was selected, as was Malik Khan. Uh, all three of our likely candidates making the squad. We had four possible candidates as well. Uh, and Kevin Molino, uh, who actually... Um, 
uh, w was expected to be injured, or sorry, at least we expected him to be injured because he had gone in for knee surgery. Uh, and he did that, and he returned playing for his club at the beginning of the uh, of June. What a hero. So he is selected to the squad, Kevin Molino. Perhaps it was just a small surgery, or, or obviously because... Uh, uh, he's back playing uh, playing one game for his club. Then he was off the bench uh, for a while. So I'm not sure he's fully recovered. Uh, also uh, in the same situation, Andre Fortune. Um, uh, did we report that in June? Uh, he was out injured for the March games, but Andre Fortune was back playing around June 10th like Kevin Molino. Uh, However, he was only named to the preliminary squad. So perhaps he didn't recover enough to make this squad, or we only had him as a possible candidate. So it could be that he simply uh, wasn't selected, maybe the injury exacerbating his ambitions there. Uh, Jomal Williams was our third possible candidate, uh, and also uh, Matthew Wu Ling. And both of those made the uh, preliminary squad, but not the final squad. So Jamal Williams, Matthew Wu Ling. Uh, on the preliminary squad only. And we had one possible but unlikely candidate in Nathaniel James, but he did make the preliminary squad, but not the final squad. Uh, now we move to the forwards, and uh, we had a likely candidate, actually the only likely candidate, uh, the only candidate in definite or likely was Levi Garcia, and he was selected to the squad. And we had Rundle Winchester as a possible candidate, but he wasn't selected even for the preliminary squad. Uh, possible but unlikely was uh, Kadeen Corbin, and uh, instead he made the squad. So a bit of a surprise there. And uh, we had Lee, uh, uh, sorry, Isaiah Lee as seemingly off the squad, uh, and he wasn't selected for the preliminary squad. So it looks like he was off the team. Uh, and uh, our only new candidate here is um, Malcolm Shaw. So Malcolm Shaw, um, uh, newly added to the team. So I'll tell you a little bit about him. He was born in Canada. Uh, perhaps he had been hoping to get on the Canadian team, but he's uh, 28 years old now and still doesn't have a cap for uh, Canada or Trinidad and Tobago. Actually, I don't think he was close to the Canada to reaching uh, Canada's team. Uh, and uh, so just recently joined, he had never uh, even been on the bench for Trinidad and Tobago. I think this happened in the last few months or even weeks. Uh, and he plays for Atletico Ottawa in Canada and was with a couple of teams in Sweden before that. So uh, Malcolm Shaw, new to the squad there. And um, finally, we had a couple of players categorized excuse me, categorized as general attackers. And uh, one of them was the possible but unlikely Real Gill, but he did make the squad. So good for him, uh, surprising us there. And uh, the player we had uh, seemingly off the squad was Samory Powder. And Samory Powder was named to the preliminary squad. So both of those guys doing a bit better than we expected. Okay, and uh, on uh, so that's it. Just one player we uh, that wasn't on our radar uh, added to the team, and then a few players that were on our radar, and a few players that weren't uh, in the soccer files, which I'll tell you about. Not more, not much more than just mentioning them by name. Perhaps like their auntie is listening and would be delighted to hear. At least they've been added to the podcast. So. Um, uh, on the prelim, oh no, I'm going to do that in the new section uh, down below. So uh, just hold on a minute there, and uh, we'll come back to that. All right, we move on to the summary section. So we're going to uh, summarize the notable non-selections and the surprise inclusions. But I'll just say overall that uh, it was pretty much an expected team. So this would be, you know, uh, Trinidad and Tobago's A team. A couple of players uh, left off. But there always uh, there always are a few, so it doesn't necessarily mean that uh, um, it's a B team. So here are the notable non-selections. We had as a likely candidate the central defender uh, Justin Garcia, 
he only made the preliminary squad. And uh, we had a definite, so probably the biggest surprise of all, uh, our, our definite candidate for left back, um, Noah Powder, uh, but not uh, just named to the preliminary squad. Uh, not even named to the preliminary squad is um, a left back that we, uh, we thought was likely to make it. Uh, Keston Julian. So biggest surprises for us there uh, at left back. Uh, at right back, there's also uh, Jesse Williams, who we thought likely to make the squad, but only named to the preliminary squad. And I think I should go back and say uh, Keston Julian, uh, not even named to the preliminary squad. So that much more of a surprise uh, for us there. Um, so Jesse Williams, right back. And uh, central midfielder, um, John Paul Rochford. Uh, we considered him a definite candidate, uh, but he only made the preliminary squad. And the same is true with uh, left winger Rion Moore, uh, a definite candidate who uh, was just named to the preliminary squad. So I suppose you could argue that uh, with that number of players, it's a partial B team. Uh, I don't really think so. Trinidad and Tobago uh, didn't play in the World Cup. Um, I, I think there are other reasons for these players missing uh, rather than, you know, resting them like uh, Canada and USA are, are doing. Okay, on with surprise inclusions. Uh, just three of them here. One is the uh, general midfielder, uh, Justin Sadu. We had him as possible, but unlikely, as we did with all three of these players, actually. Uh, forward, Kadeem Corbin, uh, possible, but unlikely, but making the squad. And finally, uh, general forward, Real Gill. So we may get to know these uh, players a little better, but generally players at this level uh, are on the bench. So it might be a surprise. Uh, if we see them maybe subbing in. Okay, now we go on to our new players. So we had, um, uh, oh, I've lost him in my graphics. We had uh, one new player added to the uh, squad that's going to the Gold Cup, and that is Malcolm Shaw, the forward. And he's the only one. And now I'll cover players that we did have on our radar. Um, and uh, these were players that played in June of 2023. That was uh, uh, their first appearance for the team. So Christian Lee Him, uh, Stephen Marcano, uh, Michael Kedman. Um, yes, all of them called up uh, uh, in June. So they got on our radar uh, that way. Uh, uh, also added to the uh, final, uh, sorry, to the preliminary team that we hadn't talked about in part one, but but they had been on our radar, was uh, Nathaniel Garcia. So uh, he last appeared for the national team on the bench in 2019. So um, uh, we didn't include him in our list. Uh, Atuala uh, Guerra is the next one. Uh, also last appeared uh, in 2019, so wasn't on our list. And finally, uh, Canadian-born Luke Singh. He actually played for uh, FC Edmonton, where I'm broadcasting from right here. Uh, but uh, he um, made it to the preliminary squad, but not the final squad. And then uh, some brand new players for us uh that get onto the radar by being named to the preliminary squad here so we may see these players in the future the first one for instance uh rio cardenas uh is born in 2006 so uh he's just about 15 no wait that would make him about 16 or 17 years old now uh so some of these players we might see in the future rio cardenas uh, josiah uh, cooper josiah cooper uh, Mika Kane, Luke Phillip, and uh, Kahim Thomas. So maybe we will see you guys down the road for Trinidad and Tobago, but that's what we have for the 2023 Gold Cup. So I'm just going to end with a nice pretty graphic here. And uh, okay, that is it. And we will hopefully see you for our next team. <laughs> Bye.